All right. We're going to run through my mixing template. I've just updated it and now I'm gonna show you how I set it up. So what I've got, I've got this audio track is not part of the template. It's just for you to hear this mic. So we'll start here. I've got the master. That's the final master. And on that one, I've got the adapter metric AB. This plugin is amazing. You can load up 16 um, reference tracks and you can level match them. You can cue them, latch them sync them with the previous track so if you have the demo of the artist you just set it to sync uh you set it underneath and you can just compare your mix to the demo to even other songs you have or songs from the album or whatever you compare it spectrum wise that's frequency spectrum wise uh stereo image wise dynamics wise correlation and loudness because we all want to get loud then next is my bx meter just to have a different meter than the standard pro tools meter to look on uh, every now and then uh the bx solo which i really like for the side solo button if i get all stereo tracks of drums which i suspect to be mono i really like to solo the sides on the master and just flip through all the stems to see which ones are actually mono and that way i can split them into two monos and take one out and put the other one in the center and then my plugin cpu load would be half of what they would be with the stereo channels so then i can run a lot more plugins on my mix this is uh, are my print buses. So I've got the this print bus, which is the regular um, mix without the limiter on it. And this is then um, with the limiter on it. So it goes from the pre-master I have, where everything from the mix ends up. Uh, there my plugins are thrown on. Then it goes to the print bus. Uh, pre-fader to the print track and then here is my master chain with the soft clipper on the uh, what's this thing called again the alpha master by Alicia and then the Oxford limiter and then another pre to the limiter bus and then it goes to the limiter this way I can just record these two tracks and in one pass have the version that can go to mastering and the version that's for the artist. Uh, so on my pre-master, I have all my master bus stuff. Usually there's at least an SSL G bus compressor on there and sometimes some more stuff. Then this is the recent upgrade. I used to have four uh, auxes, four master auxes. Uh, all drums, all music, all vocals, and all effects. But I wanted to split the effects. I wanted to have the effects inside the groups they are in now. I should update this because I noticed I did do that yet. So these should go to those outputs. La -da 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 -da. That's vocal. So all the vocal effects, all the effects are here. They will be made inactive at first. And then when I need one of the effects, I'll just make them active, uh, drag them where they will go, and I'll just route them. Uh, the reason I did this was that I had all my effects bundled together, and I just had it as if I were mixing on a board, and you just have a reverb or a delay or whatever and you just have them on your auxiliaries and just send whatever you want to send there and it adds a certain type of glue but in my 
head i wanted to try if separating the effect more would uh, cause it to have more separation in the mix and more room for different elements so it could very well be that my template next week will be completely different and it i'll, I'll go back to the previous version and uh i'll hate this but this way also stem delivery is way easier because you can just export the master stems the master groups and then you have the drums with their effects and it just it's just easier workflow wise um the things that are always in here are parallel drum and bass i made a video on that so i'm not gonna dive into that uh if you haven't seen it check it out on my instagram uh i've got drum saturation uh which is great it's a culture vulture just a saturation uh device to add some nastiness to the drums i love it uh on my drum bus i've got the ssl compressor it's set to it depends on what i'm doing um if i need more transient and more low end to come through i'll do a 30 and otherwise i'll go to 10 or a 3 um i hear a lot of people that go the the what's this cross-eyed thingy i don't like that because i feel the transients come through too much and it messes with the vocals it's in the way of the vocals too much so i like to set it on 0.3 and have it just set behind the vocal and not have it in the way that much uh studio a800 you gotta go for tape when you're doing drums uh 30 ips that was the nicest one for me had the nicest roundest low end uh four five six tape i don't know how close these come to the real ones um uh, just flip through through them and see what you like always turn off the noise and i turned down the low frequency eq on this quite a bit because it's when you open it up it's like this it's all the way up um so i do that and then the black box i love this thing it's amazing i just push it up tiny amounts and i use the mix knob to blend it in this is quite a lot for me usually it's 50 50. i would love to have the real box but it doesn't have a mix knob then all music the only plugin i usually have on all music is millennia nseq 2. it's amazing um you can set it to fat to tube you can uh use it in ms mode and separately uh eq the mid and the sides also have the sides on tube and the mids on fat for example um which is great you can notice i've got a few inactive things but um that's just occasional this almost lives on this bus so i'll have it uh bypassed that's in the in the beginning of the mix and then uh right halfway the mix I'll, I'll i'll put it in all vocals okay so i've got my vocal parallel which goes to my all vocals bus which is i start with the deesser then i've got the distressor as the parallel uh, compressor uh you can just see the thing the the settings uh i might make a video where i go more in depth like i did on the drum video um notch out of the uh <laughs> what's this i mids, yeah and note how i put it on natural phase i'll make a video on that as well if i explain that now it's gonna take a long time okay and i've got the mag eq 
um, this is just set to the, to its neutral state. So um, it would be something like this, probably. Don't pin me on that. It's different every mix. Oh, and I've got a VEQ4. I'm actually surprised. I've got this. Um, okay. Cool. Maybe that's mix dependent. So I'll just bypass that. And what's on the end? A decap. That's almost always on there for a bit of saturation as well. And then the all vocals bus is Soothe 2. Yeah. Mixing is so much easier now, Soothe, in my life. I resisted plugins like Soothe and Soothe so much. And now I've got it. It saves me so much time and energy and hassle. Um, it's great. It's great. I've got the Fairchild. The Fairchild is always, always on this bus. I switch between time constant two and five a lot to see what works. Um, go check it out. And then I've got the C6, which is really nice. Uh, two and a half K dip for the harshness. Uh, these dance a little so I can push the highs up a bit. Uh, and the low mids get tucked. This frequency tends to change. Um, based on the mix, the song, and what type of mic it was used on, because some are more problematic than others. Uh, I've spent the last years and years and years behind an SSL, so an SSL is, is I can't do a mix without an SSL channel, and this Brainworks SSL channel is amazing. I've compared it to the SSL we have and yeah it's it's so great it's so great and a pull tech EQ yeah what 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 do you want me to say pull tech EQ that's it it's great I've got on the effects I've got a distortion which is just a distortion probably decap decap up with a lo-fi yeah and then i swap things up a bit here um to color it to take some high end nastiness off vocal long is the lexicon 480l i mean i either use this one or i use this one to copy the settings to make a preset for the 480l we have uh and then a lo-fi yeah again i love lo-fi it's the best plugin it, it i wouldn't know i don't know how you guys mix in different dots than pro tools you guys don't have lo-fi um a room verb what's this a reso verb okay i change things up a bit so i don't always know what's on everything but that's a short vocal sound it's not that short i believe oh it is it's 0.7 seconds it's pretty short a chamber the capital chamber is amazing i love it on instruments just to give it body and, and depth and yeah yeah if you can't have a chamber you got capital chambers emt plate mostly lives on drums and percussion stuff uh long verb emt plate again the digital plate phase verb which is a phaser be before the valhalla no matter how much stuff i say about the valhalla it's a very useful plugin and i like it it's not my most amazing reverb it's a great reverb I got a slap. This is the stereo slap. So it's set to dual echo and it's uh, delay times around 80, 90 milliseconds. And it's different delay times on both sides just to get a bit of stereo spread. Then I've got a slap mono, 
which is just 80 milliseconds, which lives only in the mids, only mono. And it just stays there to reinforce the lead vocal to really have another support underneath the lead vocal in, in that mid area, in a mid spectrum. 16th delay, really straightforward Echo Boy, 16th delay. On Echoplex, I, I flip through the styles a lot uh, to check. Eighth delay, dual echo, same thing as with the slap, the stereo slap, but then on the eighth, I've got an eighth ping pong delay as well. I just put that into the template as well. Quarter note delay and a quarter note low pass delay, which is really nice. Um, it's so low pass that it's more of a sort of a humming underneath, which is, uh, try it, try it. It's really nice. Uh, half note with a D verb. That's not standard, so I'm gonna bypass that. The MXR flanger is great. You gotta have a flanger. The doubler, which is the basic doubler, I discussed that in my vocal effects reel. Um, you should check that out. Dimension D is really great. And airflow, last but not least. Okay, so first, I rule off all the low end, low end, low end, low mids, low end, until 8K basically. Only stuff above 8K, 7K is there. Uh, don't forget to set it to linear phase. I promise I'll make a video about it uh, explaining why, but I can't go into that detail right now. A chorus on that, so that's just the high end parallel with a chorus on it, high frequency EQ on it. And then, because you filtered that much and the filter behaves a certain way phase-wise, you need the phase flip button over here to check. Sometimes in phase is the right, some, the right thing, sometimes out of phase is the right thing. You just need to swap and see what works. This I really like to ride in, in, in sections that need more air, more with in the high frequencies like a hook or an airy vocal, an ad lib, whatever, try it. Get it, try it. Don't do it throughout the whole song because that, that just, that sucks. That's just boring, but automate it in. I think that's my tablet. So I'll see you on the next one and I'm um, gonna be mixing. Later.